there's all these words server client browser api front end back end what does all this mean i'm going to explain it as simply as possible let's do it all right so this right here is you you could be on a laptop desktop an iphone whatever tablet you name it so this computer right here is called the client and on this client you're going to have a web browser this could be google chrome safari firefox internet explorer and this web browser is an app just like microsoft excel microsoft word photo booth photoshop this is just an app just like any other app on your computer however this app is the best app on your computer by far because it allows us to communicate with other computers all over the world and it does this using something called http which if you come up right here to this url we see this https and so what this stands for is hypertext transfer protocol and so what a protocol is it is just an agreed upon way to communicate between two parties so you could have morse code you could have english you could have spanish you could have sign language all of these things could be considered a protocol because you and i are both agreeing okay we're going to speak english so you understand that when i say the word the you understand what that means because you know we're speaking english with morse code if i do three taps like this that means the letter s if you know that i'm doing morse code then you know that three taps is s we can create our own protocol where three taps means something completely different so http is essentially the language that computers speak when they try to get information from each other some other well-known protocols are smtp this is for emails ip an ip address there's also dns and ssh there's a lot of different protocols so you have http and https the s just stands for secure and it adds a layer of encryption and pretty much every website today is going to use https but http and https are basically the same thing so let's say right here on my computer on the client i type in facebook.com when you click enter what happens is your browser which is this app on your computer it takes this url and it looks up in the local dns which is basically another computer somewhere that has a bunch of information it's basically a dictionary so you say okay dns computer i'm gonna look this up and then it's going to have an associated ip address with it the ip address is just like a home address each house has its own address each computer has its own ip address so when you type in facebook.com the first step is to get the ip address by using the url and dns once the browser gets the ip address it now knows the address of the other computer and this computer is known as the server so most of the time facebook.com is going to exist on a bunch of different servers if you're in china you're closest to this server if you're in atlanta you're closest to this server if you're in indonesia you might be closest to this server in this particular case the dns knows that we are closest to this server so it gives us the ip address of the facebook web page from this server so this computer our computer sends an http request to this server which is just simply another computer and so if you wanted to you could make a website and you could have it on your own computer so that when people send an http request to your website that's on your computer it's sending that request to your computer most websites however are not like that they are hosted on the cloud so like aws has warehouses full of servers and it's just basically a bunch of computers and on these computers are a bunch of files so basically i just want a file from this server and these servers typically run linux so most personal computers are windows or mac some people do use linux but almost all servers are going to be using linux so let's say you're a react developer and you make a website and you deploy it using netlify the code that you wrote is going to be on this server and it's just a series of files you go to facebook.com that is a file you go to facebook.com slash profiles that is a different file and so every web page is just simply a file that is on this computer however most web pages have a lot of dynamic data so other steps need to occur so all your react code is right here but let's say you go to somebody's profile you need this guy's information and all this information is on a database and in order to get 
that information from the database, you've probably written a back end, which is an API. And so this is all of the front end code right here. This is all the React code. But then let's say you have a use effect that makes a fetch request to your API. So we're going to call this React code. And so when you make your request to this React code, it is going to send back a response. And in this response is that use effect. So now your use effect runs and this use effect calls another fetch request, but this time it's to the API. So another fetch request is sent to this, which is another server. This is just simply another computer. And this is what hosts your backend or your API. So this API is basically a bunch of instructions that you have programmed. And this could be written in JavaScript, Python, Go. If it's JavaScript, it's going to be Node.js. And this API, these instructions usually are written to query the database. And so over here, this is yet a, another computer. And this is called the database. So you're sitting here on the client, you send an HTTP request to the website. This sends the React code. Inside of that React code is the use effect. This then sends another HTTP request to your API. In the API, which is code that you've written, this code then will query the database. So this is not an HTTP request. This is like written with SQL or no SQL. And so this will query the database and then you will then get the information to the API and the API will take the data and it will do with it, whatever you programmed it to do. And then it will ultimately send this back to the client and on the client is the react code that has already been sent there. It's still sitting there. And so when this response from the API comes back to the client, now the react code that is sitting on the client that will manipulate the data and it will make it look however you've programmed it to look. And it will do that by using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and this is all taking place on the client. So another thing that typically happens to make your website a little bit more secure is when the client sends a request to the API, there's usually a layer right here of something that is called middleware. And so what middleware is, it's just certain code that basically looks at the request and it determines if this person is allowed to move forward and go to the specified API route. So a lot of the times it uses cookies. So if you're logged in and the auth system is using cookies in your HTTP request to this API, the cookies will be in that request. And then the middleware will use the cookies to determine whether or not this guy is permitted to go to the API. And in the middleware, you can say these routes, anyone can see, but these specific routes, they must be logged in. And then for the database, there's also a layer of security called RLS, which is row level security. And so this is basically just a set of rules that is very similar to middleware. So that not just anybody can go to the database and start taking the data. Because if you didn't have these things set up, if somebody knew the API endpoint, I could write my own React code that sends requests to your API. So you need this middleware in order to make it secure. You can write code within each individual route that makes it secure, but middleware makes this much easier. And the same goes for the database. Some other person could write an API that tries to query your database. So you need to make sure that you have this secure. So when you go to someone's Facebook profile, it happens in the blink of an eye. But what's really happening is you go to this server, which has your React code. It sends that to the client. So that's two computers, one of which is a server. It then sends the request to the API. That's the third computer. And that is the second server. This then queries the database, which is the fourth computer and third server. And this all happens instantly. And so typically this right here, this is called the front end. And this can be react. This can be angular. This can be view. This can just be JavaScript and your API, this could also be JavaScript, and this would use Node.js compared to JavaScript that's running in the client. You could also use Python, you could use Go, you can pretty much use whatever language you want to create an API. And then on this database, these are things like Postgres, MySQL, MongoDB. And so when you see these technologies, you know, okay, that's on this server. You see these technologies, you say, Okay, that's on this server for the API. These technologies, okay, that's on this server for the front end. And then 
you have the client, which ultimately is going to run all of this front end code. There are times, however, when if you just go to like a pizza website and it's just showing the menu, this is all static data. So the client is just going to send the request to the React server and that's just going to send the response and that's the end of it. So that's why static web pages are so good. It makes it a little bit faster and this helps with SEO so you can get to the top of Google. So there it is. If you learn something, subscribe. You want to learn some more? Watch this video right here. See you next time.